accident. Zoe Barnes was a senior contributor at Slugline.com. Previously, she worked at the Washington Herald as a Metro reporter and political correspondent. White House counsel Bill Gallick was called into questioning this morning by Special Prosecutor Heather Dunbar. According to Dunbar's office, there are suspicions that Gallick may have tampered with witness testimony. The witness in question is Dr. Thomas Larkin, a reverend and therapist who allegedly conducted secret marriage counseling sessions for the president and first lady. Guns on college campuses. The state of Virginia is considering a bill. Tonight, authorities are looking into who vandalized a mosque under construction in Fairfax County. Thousands of people lost power tonight after a Dominion contractor was shocked on the job. Buyer beware. A warning tonight about purchasing items from the website Craigslist. An Alexandria man became the victim of a burglary, then tracked down his stolen appliances on that internet classified site. Haley Harrison was there as he got them back today. She brings us the story from the Satellite Center. Haley. Those items were sold to him before this burglary was even reported. Mm, good point. All right, thank you, Haley. Coming up on News Channel 8, more fallout from the latest scandal rocking the district. Tension and fear in the heart of the nation's capital. A wild car chase ends in gunfire. We are unraveling new information with live team coverage. We begin with D.C. Bureau Chief Sam Ford, who's been on this story from the very beginning. Sam? Morris, we are here at uh, First and Constitution Northwest, reporting live from Northwest Washington, Sam Ford, News Channel 8. All right, Morris, thank you, thank Sam. You. Today's chain of events played out in a crowded section of our nation's capital. On what would have been a normal Thursday afternoon, people were sent running away in fear. A scary sight, a pillar of smoke could be seen for miles around the district, rising from behind the Capitol building. Historic Frager's Hardware Store, where President shopped, an institution on Capitol Hill, up in flames. Good evening, everyone. I'm Morris Jones. More than 100 firefighters battled the four-alarm blaze this evening, and tonight, the 93-year-old store is gone. Robert Lyles joins us live from the scene in Southeast. Robert? Morris, iconic Frager's hardware is still ablaze. If you don't have to be in this area, simply avoid this area. Morris, back to you. Robert, you've got a good point with the smoke. We don't see any around where you are, but I know it's in the atmosphere. And what does it smell like where you are right now? It is an incredibly accurate smell, so certainly you smell what's, uh, what seems like burning wood, but there is also an accurate scent in the air. Robert Lyles with the latest. Thank you. Now to a story we told you about earlier. There's a new twist in the investigation of who sent the president and other public officials poison letters. The Elvis impersonator arrested in Mississippi is now a free man. Jenny Dorn is live in the Satellite Center. And Jenny, the feds aren't saying why they dropped the charges, but Paul Kevin Curtis claims he was framed. Yeah, Morrison, by a guy who ran for a seat in state Congress in Mississippi. My answer is bring him on. Do you think your comments when you said bring it on actually incited more violence in Iraq? No. Morris Jones live on Capitol Hill battling the elements for us this morning. Good morning <laughs> to you, Morris. Hey, good morning, guys. It's nice to hear from you. Uh, big voter turnout yesterday. Luckily, here in Washington, it was dry weather. There are some 500 international marriage brokers, most with websites. Lana married the man who brought her to America. She says she was later subjected to sexual and mental abuse. Didn't he say something to the effect that you're the most expensive toy I've ever owned? Yes, he said it was a very expensive toy for him. Lana is now divorced, still in America. She got help from the Tahereh Justice Center outside of Washington, D.C. Are women naive? Are there predators out there? What's going on? The way they operate. Flight attendants, parking attendants, bridal attendants. By definition, they're helping you unlike automated attendants, which annoy you. I'm Caitlin, XM's automated attendant. When you hear your option, you can say it. It's okay if you interrupt me. Yes, do interrupt. Sometimes if you say agent or operator, you'll get closer to a real person. Other people won't wait. So the first thing is I try zero or zero pound or pound zero or zero star, just anything to try to interrupt it. Many times that will put you direct to cue to a human if you don't want to sit there and punch buttons all day. Thank you for calling Pepco. We are currently experiencing a high volume of calls, which may result in a longer wait time. Businesses are saving time and money by outsourcing. 
American companies are expected to send one and a half million U.S.-based call center jobs to other countries, according to the Trade Union Congress of the Philippines. Many times the people who are answering the phone may be fluent in English, but they don't understand the nuances of our life over here. Even if you get a person, you don't have a person in the company in the place where you think you're calling. For example, I called about my XM radio account and became a world traveler without leaving the office. Where are you? Um, we're located in Manila, sir. Oh, you're in Manila? Yes, sir. Oh, great. How's the weather in Manila today? It's fine, sir. When the Manila customer service rep learned I wanted to cancel my account, he directed me elsewhere. Okay, I'm Morris. How are you doing today? Fine. Where are you located? I'm located in Montego Bay, Jamaica. Well, Montego Bay, Jamaica. I just talked to somebody in Manila. Bottom line, XM convinced me not to cancel my subscription by offering a couple of months free. AOL has become famous for not letting subscribers leave. They try to con you into staying longer or not canceling. Is it no wonder then that Americans aren't happy with customer service? Companies are not praised as much for services as they used to be. So what can you do about it? Call and complain? I'm sorry, I'm having trouble finding your account. And I'm Morris Jones in Washington.